saying we've got it contained even yet. We're 55% contained, 57% contained. That means that we have what we consider good black line around 57% of our fire. Now there's a difference, and we talked about this briefly the other day, I think. There's a difference between containment and control. You remember that? Containment means we have a line around it. Control means we're confident that it would really be a catastrophic event if that fire escaped that line. We're not there yet. But we are really happy with the progress we've made on getting the line, black line, increased every day now for the last few days. I remember three days ago our incident commander said for the first time we've gone from defensive posture to offensive posture. And that's increased every day. This is very fortunate. Even with the high winds, dry conditions, low humidities, our fire has stayed pretty much where it was. Okay, a little brief overview here. We start on this west side of the fire. Can you see? I don't mean to block your view here. All right, so the west side of our fire. By the way, uh, Mina, I talk to the people, not to the board, as much as I can. I tell Mina some of the things I do. And, and it goes like, okay, now can you all see this? <laughs> okay. All right, so we're going around here, really getting more and more black line. There's a couple of places that we're still working on lining out, uh, tying into existing roads, putting in dozer line or hand line. Because of the terrain, it's very difficult for us to put these uh, things in certain areas. You know how steep the terrain gets around here. All right, but there's only a little spot in here, a little area in here that's not black, going all the way around this whole, we have been able to take resources from here, move them down here to, to your area, protect your places more. Come around here, occasionally you'll see a little break in the, in the black and a tiny little red, like right in here, there's a section from here to here around uh, this area, but we're getting, we feel more and more confident about that we'll be able to put black around these areas more and more. Picking up the black here, going down all the way around this east side, all the way down to here, and here's, the, here's Masonville, go around that corner. Still got some heat in here, but we've got line now all the way around below this, and moving over here to Storm Mountain. Now somebody asked me this morning, what do you mean you have line in? And again, that's our first choice is to tie in existing roads, so we're not tearing up the countryside. We can use a good road there. But when we can't, or when the roads are like this, we come in and we straighten it out with a bulldozer line, and then if we need to, we'll burn off small sections of between the bulldozer line or the road or the hand line and where the fire is so that they won't have enough fuel to have momentum when it gets to the the place we're trying to hold. So the guys are working in there, coming around, hand line, dozer line, and existing roads. Coming around, and they're feeling more and more comfortable. Well, let's go back here to the uh, spot fire that we had right here. They're calling it uh, the Otter Spot Fire. That was 2,400 acres, probably. That was a pretty active thing that night that things really blew up. Good news on that, we have line, as I mentioned to you yesterday, to some of you, all the way around it, and we have black now, almost all the way around it. There was some heat up here in this top, very difficult terrain to work in. The guys are having to take our time, okay? Yesterday we could not fly our air support. Winds and smoke did not let us fly at all. Today it's clearing up more. I imagine when we get back tonight, we'll hear that we were able to fly. Uh, what was it? Uh, two days ago we had 30 hours of flight, and uh, three days ago we had 60 hours of flight. The day before that, I think we had nothing. So, depending on the wind and the smoke conditions, all right? But we came around. Now, Storm Mountain, the fire is very, very difficult. It's hung up in some pretty steep terrain in there. Some of you live up in that Storm Mountain area. Very difficult but it's been working its way down, kind of backing, it's not making a, a run, but it's backing down, and we have a dozer line coming down that same area along the road, and the dozer line in here, and it's a, it's a 
fire creeps down, that we take the line a little lower and burn out the fuels. So it's protecting the housing down here below Storm Mountain. And we're not, there's areas we can't go in there and just say, hey, let's put a hotshot crew in there and dig line. There's areas that we have to say, well, we're going to have to let it back down to us, but let's get ready for it. And that's, it's going very well. And that area, they're, they're very happy about this retreat going across Manhattan. Already got more black in here. Things are looking better in here. We're feeling more and more confident that we're making some progress. Up and through here, there is that uh, North Fork Trail. We're using that North Fork Trail as part of our holding area. Okay. The fire did cross it, what, two nights ago. We had a 30-acre spot fire or slop over there, still debating which it was, and it was very difficult to get to. But we were able to get a hot shot crew or two in there. They've been able to line out that entire 30-acre slop over. It's tied back into the North Fork Trail, and we're, we're feeling very good about holding it there. Okay? Um, coming around, the rest of the area, down in here, you'll see we've got a nice black line starting to expand, come around, as a lot of black line here. So we feel like we're starting to kind of close this line off. So the crews are going up to a mile a day at night. We're working 24-hour shifts still, so we're getting closer and closer. Just knocking this thing, tightening it off, pinching it off, um, which is our goal. Uh, Weather-wise, we have red flag warning that's for high winds, dry conditions tonight and midnight, all the way through next tomorrow morning. So we still have weather to contend with. Uh, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, when you have a cold front coming into the area, or a mountain wave as they call it, what happens? Winds pick up right ahead of that front. And so drying winds usually. Um, so we're expecting activity in the fire, but every day we're more and more confident that we've turned the corner, but it's not over yet. Okay. As you saw in this east troublesome fire, all it takes, you know, is, is the right combination of stuff. But we feel like we're a lot further ahead than they are. Uh, we would have doubled our resources, doubled the number of people who got on the fire in the last week. From 900 to 1800. Uh, so weather-wise, we're still expecting moisture, which is good, to come in this weekend. I think I've heard different models, Saturday night, Sunday, somewhere in there. Um, and that's really, really good for us. That the higher humidity, more moisture, cooler temperatures, less winds, or what really it takes for us to finish this off. You will see smoke. You will see smoke all the way into so you get a foot or two of snow out there. So the, the sheriff's office has please said, please don't call 911 unless there's imminent danger. There will be smoke. We know it's smoke. We know it's there. Around your houses, down in uh, Northern Mountain area, down in uh, Masonville, there's engines still pre-positioned all through that area. If there's a smoke, they're going to go over and, and extinguish it or let it burn out if it's an area that you can do safely and just get rid of that extra dead down fuel. All right. Uh, weather, what else should I tell you? Um, uh, cautiously optimistic. There's still a lot of, in the Pigree Park area, there's still a lot of hard terrain to build fire line in. They're still doing a lot of structure protection uh, working in that area. Um, questions now? Yeah. Have, have the two come together yet? Have no, they they no, have not joined? Not even close. Uh, this morning at 3 o'clock, is my understanding, the sheriff was on a Facebook post, uh, the sheriff down in the Estes Park area, and he said it was six miles still outside of Estes, and I don't know where that is today, but that would still take quite a bit for the main fire to come to us. Now this fire, this 1,000, 1,200, 1,300 acre spot fire that started up here. That fire, yeah, is in the national park, and by law, we don't pull bolos as in. So what they're doing there 
is it's out of the way of the, of the they're doing point protection for structures, and they're saying, okay, it's got a burn in here, but we really can't go in there and stop it. We can slow it down with the aircraft if, if the weather lets us fly. But what we can do is go to some roads that are already there and prepare that road system to be our fire line. And so when the fire reaches that certain point, then we're going to be able to defend it better. But we don't go in and do bulldozers in the National Park. Good question. Well, I have a question of, up on Storm Mountain. Yes. Um, they were letting some people up this morning to winterize and stuff, but where we are, they're saying that we can't. And I don't know if you can answer this or not, being specific. But I didn't know if that meant that the fire was too close to our area. Okay, that's a great question. Is it, why aren't they letting me back into my property? They, number one, it could be the fire is, is still close in there. We may have heavy equipment. We may have uh, fire engines, trucks. Uh, another reason could be trees that were damaged or coming down. Okay, another reason could be the power company. But a lot of the roads have said, please don't let people go up yet. We've got to replace power poles and then repair power lines. And yeah, so you're, you're off the grid. So there's a number of reasons we have to check out the bridges. If there's a bridge in there, make sure it's, it's still. Uh, we had two firefighters die in, in here in eastern Colorado two years ago. Volunteer firemen going across the bridge and on a hundred times before and, and it collapsed because it's been damaged. So there's a lot of different reasons. The, the, I, we don't close the roads and we don't open the roads. That's all through the county system. But that's some of the reasoning they have to go through. Thank you. Good. Yes. Yeah, on the troublesome fire. Yes. Uh, for for Estes, when when would they make the decision to let people go back in? There? Well, that's a great question. When would they make a decision to let people go back into the Estes area? I would guess it's not going to be real quick because that fire has been so erratic and that fire moves so quick, so fast so far that I'm sure they're very cautious because they're, they're not getting, this has been so much less extreme right now than what they've had. And so I'm, I'm guessing that you're going to know that through your county. Are you on the, the, web, the website and everything for the county evacuation and such? I'm guessing it's not going to be right away.